Why do we have to clean mould every other week in New Zealand? We've got energy ratings for our appliances. We've got safety ratings for our cars. It's the middle of winter, Aotearoa, and we have to open our windows and doors for ventilation. And see my breath when I wake up. Here, here's a roof, there ain't no insulation. Welcome to New Zealand. I'm Catherine Leitner, CEO of Asthma New Zealand, and I'm on a mission to help you understand what a healthy home is. We're going to travel up and down the country. We're going to go and have a look at what's being done to improve the health of the houses that we live in. Is it possible in Aotearoa? Because it hasn't been for the last four decades. I think we all accept at this stage that healthy homes are linked to childhood diseases and to ill health. So it's 28,000 children each year are hospitalised in New Zealand for housing related diseases. Unfortunately, a house built today's building code in New Zealand would not pass the Irish building code from when I was born. The building code isn't that great for the houses that we're building right now because it is a minimum standard. Any day now we're promised we're going to get a new building code. I would like us to get a move on. Do you think New Zealand have left it too late? The key thing that we talk to the sector about is buildability. Are these changes buildable? But we can't get too far in front so that the sector can't build what we regulate. So there's money put into the health system, but we know there's a drag on the health system because of poor housing. Yes. So how do we change that? How do we influence? I think as a sector, we don't work well together. Now let's go have a look. What makes a home healthy? We're going to go speak to experts to understand about insulation. Is all insulation equal? Can you and I install our own insulation? When it comes to insulation, a ground vapour barrier is something that you and I could do this weekend. 40 litres a day from an average size house evaporates up. If it's good enough for us as kids to grow up with wool jerseys, why would it not be good enough to put this product in our houses? We insulated our whole house on our own. You put the insulation in? Yeah, yeah, every wall. You've thought about priorities. Yeah. And you prioritise your health first. Mm -hmm. Everything else can come after that, including what the neighbours think about the house. Once upon a time in New Zealand, ventilation was simply opening a window or a door. What we're realising now is that that's not enough. And so we're going to understand what does ventilation look like? How do you and I use it so that it keeps our internal environment healthy? All things going well, this is going to work. So we could do this anywhere around yep. the outside perimeter and this is the amount of yep. air leakage. And that's one of the biggest leaks left in our modern buildings. So I think I understand the difference between positive and balanced ventilation. Let me see. Ceiling cavities, a place I'm finding myself quite a bit. How easy is it for me to change one of these filters? Or do I have to call somebody every time I need it done? We're going to go and speak to a number of different experts. I want to understand how do we use our heaters so that it's sort of affordable and it does what we want them to do. Choosing a heater is actually a bit of a science. There are right heaters for me to choose and then there are heaters that I probably should stay away from. Firstly, I'd say any heat is good, but some will cost more because of the way that the house is able to keep that heat in the house. I talk to people and say, look, Electricity goes up 100% every decade, and it has done since the 70s. So you either spend the money on the build, or you'll spend the money over the lifetime of the build. But you will spend the money. Over the last few episodes, we've been looking at all of the components that go into making a healthy home. We're going to go and have a look at some new builds. Will we know the difference? We're going to go and have a look at home star homes, passive house, even Believe it or not, a rammed earth house. Yes, a house made of earth. And they're all apparently what the experts call healthy homes. 
when somebody's sitting here talking to you about wanting to build their dream home, how do you sell health to them? We would initially price based on code minimum. We would improve your floor, your cladding choices, glass choice, and your aluminium joinery choice, and then your insulation choice to get you to a Homestar 6. And then if you want to go to a 7, we would increase that. If you want to go to a Homestar 8, we have to increase it again. Right, so the New Zealand Building Code, if it was put on the Homestar rating scale, where would that sit? I understand it's around a 3 or a 4. Tell me about what a rammed earth house actually is. The key thing is, is that what we've done is we've created rock. These walls will hold temperature. That thermal mass in them has so much potential to keep a house warm or cool. A passive house. I'm going to say, what, does it not fight back? In these conditions today, it's seven degrees out there right now. You'd hope that this house fights back on your behalf to keep you warm. So those who are just learning about what Passive House is, there's actually different tiers. So this home should be hitting a, a plus, which is that it's producing a lot of its own electricity on top of being high performance in its own right. Instead of single walls, we've gone double walls, there's two layers of insulation on the ceiling, European window joinery, balanced ventilation systems. In fact, the house is so large, we have three ventilation systems through the home, uh, which is unheard of typically in, in projects in New Zealand. Emma, it is super impressive for me to walk on site and see you here. What about this build for you makes it such a unique experience? Compared to standard houses, it's just such a big difference. And you can feel it when you come on site in the morning and it's five degrees outside and you come in and it's about 14 degrees inside. The whole concept of passive house feels out of reach for most. You're proving that that's not the case. That's, that was the aim, basically. A lot of people think, you know, passive houses and high performance homes have to be these very modern boxes, mm. but they can look like anything. You know, this is in a rural section, you know, it's cheap and cheerful plywood cladding at the end of the day. You know, this house could have been, you know, thousands of dollars more, hundreds of thousands of dollars more easily with exactly the same shape, exactly the same form if we had a different cladding. If we'd paid 50 grand for a kitchen, our first heating bill for this house was for $4. Was that for a day? That was, no, that was for a month. Living in a healthy home is not a luxury, it's a necessity. Unfortunately, Aotearoa, we've got about 1.8 million homes that were just built to a code. Is it possible to build en masse homes that are healthy? Is it possible to produce a passive house in volume? Absolutely. So what we've done is we've stripped out everything that's not delivering the performance that we need We've actually managed to re reduce 88% of the energy running costs compared to a normal brand new home. Wow. And wanting to make that accessible for as many Kiwis as possible. Is there a significant change in process and practice building to high performance versus to code? It's just learning that there's new processes out there and new ways, which in an evolving industry like ours, it's, it's it's a natural step change. Could you ever build a house to code again? I'd struggle. I think a lot of people can't get their head around how could you ever keep a house at a constant 20 degrees. You could never do that on a code minimum. The insulation levels just aren't there. When the valuer came in and he said, oh, where's the heating source? And I said, it doesn't have one. He said, you're crazy, you're in Tower Park, you need a heating source. I said, it doesn't need one. Yeah, but I still don't think he believes me. We're going to go have a look at Kiwi Ingenuity that's going to help potentially take our 1.8 million unhealthy homes and make them healthy. The research has been called the Parker Wrap. So the option all of us have is to put another jersey on inside. And instead of us individually putting on another jersey, we put a parker around the whole building. So an insulated jacket around the outside of the building. Brandon, the tether sensors that we've had in the homes for this series have been invaluable. When you look at the data, is that what you're expecting to see? Absolutely. It's undeniable that all the asthma New Zealand homes in the series, between the high-performing homes and the code standard homes, the high-performing homes perform way better than the code standard homes. In a lot of cases, the code standard homes are actually unhealthy. 
So as the sun sets on this epic adventure, remember we set out to answer a few simple questions. Is it possible to live in homes that keep us healthy? Healthy homes should not be a dream. They need to be a Kiwi reality. And so it's gonna be you and I that are gonna push that through. And we hope that this journey makes a difference, not just to our community, but to all Kiwis. Kaki, thanks.